All right, this is what is known as tinning the cable. Uh, we heat up the solder iron. We get some solder. Uh, prior to starting, I grab some flux. And I place the flux on the cable. And I pin the cable. This is actually the uh, battery cable. What I did is I prepped it and then I used a heat shrink over the, the whole entire plug. So I can use it in the back and it becomes a little stronger. And I'm going to tin the tips of the, the cable heat up. And these are my goggles. Let me check if it's hot enough. I'm going to place it on the cable where I have some of the acid on there. Yep, I see it smokes a little bit. So now we're going to get a little bit of the solder. And we're going to place it right over. And I'm going to remove it. Okay, put this over here. Pretty easy to do the tinning. Let me let that stop moving for a second and I'll show you. See, by me letting it heat up and going down as a drop. It makes a nice clean tin right there of solder. So when we add it to the board, it'll grab on pretty good. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the negative. Place some of the solder right on top. Then gently let it run down. Pull back. And it's a nice clean tin. Right there, you see? Can't see the actual cables because the whole thing is covered up with solder. That is a perfect tin. Prior to doing this, I had already tinned. Bring this over here. The whole um, power distribution board. I added a. I put flux and I added it. Added enough um, solder to all my points. This way, when it's time to put it together. All I have to do is heat up this point, get the uh, power cable, place it over the hot um, solder, and boom, it's going to connect. So. Solder. Place it on top. Okay, so it's a little stronger there. Alright, take the cable, negative. Put this little tie wrap right through here. Give it a small little pull. Perfect, and then cut off the tip. Bam! Tip. That's not coming off of nobody. So there. Now we're feeding our power distribution board. Now that I got the uh, CC3D board uh, controller ready to go, and I got my uh, receiver ready to go. Now I can solder what I started the other day. Finish the solder in here. So I got my battery uh, port in the back here, ready to go. I got my FPV system powered up, ready to go. All I got to do is plug it into my Mobius camera. I removed the top so it's easier to work with. And then, like you saw in the last video, I had already the motors installed uh, in the a clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise setup already. So we're good to go there. And here's the wires from the motors in the bottom. So next step is to actually solder all the CESCs onto this board that I had preset already with melted solder here. So I shoved the ESC right through and I'm going to do that with two sides first. First I'm going to do that side, then I'm going to do this side. On this side, while I lay the board, really easy right there. Boom, there we go. So now we're going to solder this over here and these two cables over here. All right, so like I mentioned before, step one, we're gonna heat up this element over here to get a positive in. I'm gonna try not to heat it up too much, just the tip. And let me see if I can be able to see that. 
And then I'm going to play it and drop this wire right in there. So let me start heating up this corner right here. Not very, very fast. Yeah. All right, positive is in. See if we can see it there. So I've got to be extremely careful not to put that plastic away. There we go. One is over here. Okay, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. Where we have the um let me grab my flashlight here if you can see it. Where we have the positive from the ESC plugged in here and the negative from the ESC plugged in there. So I'm going to do the same thing to, I'm not going to bore you step by step, but I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Then I'm going to flip the board completely around and then do the, here it is. All started up and ready to go. Let me put some light on here, see if it comes out clear. So I connected these two here, positive, negative. Positive, negative. Let's make sure the solder there, nice and clean, and uh, should be good. So now the next step is to put some um, hot glue in there, so that they're nice and sealed. They don't get any moisture, any contact, or anything else. All right, here, I since I was gonna about to put the hot glue on here, I decided to. Um, Flip the cables, instead of going from down up, I made them from the top to the bottom. That way when I flip it this way, it's not, um, it's not, I'm not having to twist it, like I have to do with that one there. So, all right, so let's go ahead and start with some, some hot glue. I'm just gonna dab some very carefully around here. Now the hot glue is going to do two things. It's going to obviously protect us from moisture and whenever that cable gets pulled or pushed all the strength and all the weight is going to be on the hot glue and not on the solder itself. So that's going to be a big help to strengthen this up. Hot glue is... Alright, here we go. Let me disconnect this. I don't want it to keep dripping. All right, so see that one I'm add a little more, but you see as the hot glue starts hardening, it becomes like a milky white color. It's gonna get these little strings out of the way now that kind of leaves floating there. There we go. And again, I'm not planning on making this like completely waterproof. I'm not gonna go underwater with it, but at least moisture, dirt, um, cables getting pulled, you know, so it's a little bit of protecting in there, especially with the positive cable. Ground, no big deal, but you want to seal as much of the um, of the power as possible from being exposed of the positive from being exposed to the elements. All right, now once that dries, I'm gonna put in my little rubber fittings, put it up there, and then we start. Uh, Tie wrapping the ESCs, cutting cables, and getting to the final phase of this. I got the top connected to the bottom. Here's all my ESCs hanging down, which I'm going to connect now. Flip it so you can see it. And like I said, I ran the ESCs through these little spots since I'm going to two-sided tape the uh, board in the center. And that two-sided tape has a nice, the 300 vibration damper. Another reason I use this is because instead of just running all the cables through the middle and having a space and then trying to figure out what's what later, I know that each of these sections represent the ESC. So it's either, I know that this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. No guesswork, no headaches, no problems. And if, I don't know if you can see, it's nice and clean. All the cables are in the center. Let me try to lower it here in the lights so you can see. So vibration dampener still nice and squishy which works great so all right now for placement I'm going to tie wrap all of the uh, ESCs so I can start my uh, electronics my wiring my testing and everything else so 
So it's coming. It's coming. All right, I got the uh, board in place facing forward. I already have it with the two-sided tape in there. I have my USB pre-connected. Once I'm done, I just pop it out after I program it. And then I ran all my ESC cables down the bottom, wrapped it up nice and neat, and they're plugged in. So what I'm going to do now, um, and it's important, especially with ESCs, is all these ESCs... Oh, um, this in the bottom, don't worry, that's not a rig. What I did is I soldered the tips of all these cables together just to get it fired up. Once I see that that are going clockwise or counterclockwise in, in the right direction, then I'll cut them down and solder them direct and boom, no more cables. Um, if not, then I have to, I know I have to invert them. So whichever ones I have to invert, I'll label with like a little yellow tape to know I got to go back and invert those cables when I solder them in. All right, so these BEC, uh, these ESCs, like most, have a, a built-in BEC, a BEC, which will power, put power on these rails, and this is what's going to feed this board. Now, we don't want to do power, 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 all four. It's unnecessary. You only need it from one. Um, what happens on some BECs, they're regulated and nothing will happen. But on a lot of them, you have too many feeding the same rail and it can get damaged. So better off, only need one. So the easiest way to do this, the way I do it, is I leave the first one or the last one, doesn't matter, your choice, connected. Then I pull each out and I'll clip just about here the red cable so there's no power coming in. And then I'll remove the pin and pull out the center uh, red uh, power. So this rail down here will feed the board and no other contact will go off. Cut the tip off. Then I use uh, nail cutters and I snip the tip so that way there's no cables being exposed. Then with these same little scissors, I simply went over here. I lifted one of the little plastic clips, the one in the middle, and I pulled the cable right out. So this is what connects to the rail. Gone. Then I put a really thin um, electrical tape. I actually cut it in half this way and about this big. I rolled it around this way and then once it was nice and tight, then I got a, a second strip and I rolled it in the opposite direction. And that's it. The first rail is complete and ready to go. So. Um, for you guys that are used to using the red, white, and black um, ESC cables and suddenly one day you get like these uh, brown and red and orange and you're like, whoa, um, which one's the data and which one's the positive and which one's the ground? All you have to always remember is brown is ground. That's it. So if brown is the ground, you know that red is still power, that means yellow. Or orange is your data cable so I just got to make sure and this is very important uh, you guys that use these FPV setups make sure 100% without a doubt before you turn this thing on plug any kind of power to it that you connect the antenna to the your FPV if you don't do this the power that this thing generates has nowhere to go and it's gonna go back to itself and burn itself out so very important even for programming, even for setup, you must always have an antenna on your FPV gear.